o'clock though. But it's two o'clock Apple time. <clears throat> it's yep. Choked up. That's all right. You see it? Yes. Look, it's enabled. What's I'm enabled? My challenge. Your challenge is enabled. What? Somebody texted me. No. Nope. What oh, makes? We went live. I got an alert. We're oh. live. I didn't get a alert. We are live. And we need we need a, a saying. Live. Live. Well, every time in my head, it's like live local like, late late breaking, but like that's a news of, channel, so I can't do that. Large and in charge. <laughs> we are. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, earlier we said we were two old witches on a bench, but we didn't say witches. So nope. Well. <laughs> we are, uh, there's a train coming. I can hear it. Yep. And there's traffic. And um, we're outside for a little bit, but we're going to go inside in a minute. Um, before we get started, we just thought we'd start out here so we don't bother some of the, um, people inside the building we're going to go into. Yes. So welcome to this week's, uh, chillier than expected. History Loves Company. I'm Amy Reed with the Marietta Museum of History. This is Krista McKay with the Marietta Museum of History. And we are out and about again, once again, bringing you the latest news in history. Yes. <laughs> All that is not new to no. yes. <laughs> We know. are here for you. We've been sitting on the side of a street for the last 10 minutes waiting and enjoying just sitting and talking about things that go on. It's watching the cars roll by, like, yeah. It's been fun. It is fun. I, we were saying we could do this in our retirement. Just sit on the porch and watch people go by and complain and, you know, point out how things could be better because that's what we were doing. That's <laughs> all we were doing. <laughs> we're good at that. <laughs> Just doing the things. Here it comes. Yes. Oh, here it comes. I'm waiting for it. And then the, now I hear a helicopter, too. Like, it's a legit... No, it's not a helicopter. It's a truck behind you. No, there's a there's something over on this oh, side, boy. too. There's busy all Friday. the sounds busy, busy of Friday. Marietta on the square. Hi, yes. John. Hey, Dad. Busy day today. So we are here. Actually, all these sounds and sights are uh, up and down Church Street in Marietta. If you're um, not familiar, which I'm pretty sure all of you are, but if you're not, Church Street is the street that comes from the hospital into town. It has all the churches on it. That's Here's your sign. <laughs> <laughs> Am I on Church Street? Yep. yep. All the churches. All yes. the churches. Yes. So, um, let's wait a minute for this truck to roll on by. There's a lot uh, of noisy ones. Yeah. All of a sudden, it was quiet earlier. But that that's just, that figures. We won't be here the whole time, we no, promise. No. So. There it is. That's what I was waiting for. Get on out of here. Two o'clock right. on a Friday. Squares yes. hopping. So we're sitting outside a building um, now known as K. Mike Whittle Florist and um, otherwise known as the Clark Library Building. Mm -hmm. And um, this building was a library for how many years? 80 years or so? Yeah, 70, 80, somewhere around yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, somewhere in there. And... Um, and it, so we're going to go in it in a minute, but like I said, it's a florist now, so a lot of the original aspects of the building, you'll notice, have been either covered up or, or you can't really tell from the inside anymore. Mm -hmm. But let's let's go ahead and go walk inside. Oh, Hold on, before wait. I forget, obviously stars oh. are enabled. We do have a yes. goal of 5,000, but this yes. is even more important. Oh, yeah. Do you want to take the book up? No. I'll do that in a second. Okay. We do have an incentive, but... Um, Today is literally the one year anniversary of our first video. Oh, really? It showed up on my memories oh, today where on did Facebook. We go? Where did we go? The cemetery. Yes. Yay, that's right. That yes. was our first video. Yes. Um, was a year ago today. And we've got to be up to like forty now or something like that, right? Um, I, I, I yeah, so. probably close. Hi, Ann. Between four, hi, Ann. Between forty five and fifty. Yeah. Here, you take this while okay. I get. Okay. So going back to stars. Sorry, I just wanted yes. to mention that while I remembered. Yes. So. Um, we're, we're back on the stars thing for those who haven't seen it the last couple weeks. Um, if you look down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see the option to, um, award us stars. And basically for every star you send, we earn money, um, that will go back into, uh, programming and, um, bringing you things in history like this, events and, um, exhibits, exhibits, all that, kind of all that good stuff at the museum. And so... Um, to incentivize uh, giving of the stars, 
and you know you can give more stars the more you're enjoying it but you can't take any away once you give them so yeah. we don't <laughs> so, roll that way whoop, whoop, hey davis so if you give us stars today's incentive is a copy of history and focus let me do it this way actually so that they can see it i'm gonna turn it this way history and focus and is a photo collection of cobb county's past and so today we are going to give uh, this copy of the book um, to whoever at the end of the show, at the end of the program, whoever gives the most stars to us today will win a copy of this book. And we will reach out to you and get your, uh, figure out how to get it to you and whether we... We'll mail uh, it. Mail we'll it get, we'll or, get yeah. your address and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, keep and that it's in free mind. free shipping. Free shipping. Very important. For yes, yes. It's all free. <laughs> We're not going to charge you for shipping for a book you won. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so, please uh, help us out and uh, like us and give us some stars and share this um, as we walk around the Clark Library today. It's got a great history with it. So, we're going to get up and move inside, point out a few things inside first. Then we're going to come back outside and, and we'll go more into the in-depth of the yeah. history of, of Sarah Freeman Clark that is named after and the history of the building itself. And the one, point? yes, okay. the one thing you guys won't be able to get is this wonderful floral smell oh, inside yes. this building. If we had smell a vision, we would oh, give it to you, but it's, it's wonderful. Oh, smells heavenly. delicious. How do we pay for the stars? Well, that's a great question. Thank you, Davis. We, um, you go down to the bottom of your screen. There should be a button that says send stars, I yes. think. And if you click that, it'll take you somewhere that you can, um, load your, um, you can load your credit, credit card. card. Thank you. Load your credit card into, and um, I don't it know. I haven't done it. <laughs> we haven't done it yet. I haven't actually given anybody stars yet, so I'm I'm guessing on this. But you push the button that says "Give Stars," and somehow it'll ask for your credit card, and you do it that way. So um, I guess one of us should try it so we know how to give directions next time. I'm sorry. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, I I know a way we can do it. Okay. Without us having to use our own personal money. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Good. We'll do that. Um, All right. But yeah. So let's um, let's go inside okay. and I'll take that book from you. Okay. So you don't have to carry it. Thank you. All right. First, let's look. Take a look at the outside of the building before we go in, so you know where we're going. Here we are in Church Street. Okay. There's all that traffic. We're next to Mays Ward Dobbins uh, Funeral Home right there, and so this is the building right here. Beautiful old brick building. It's got an octagonal center, which as you'll find out in a little bit, was the original part of the building. And then it's got some wings off of each side of it that we will discuss in a little bit. So let's go in. Did you fix the Wi-Fi thingy? Uh, not on this one, so hopefully okay. we won't have an issue. But okay. we'll be back out in yeah. shortly. Okay. So we're gonna come on in here. Beautiful interior with flowers, as you would expect as a florist, a beautiful interior. Now, when we came in before, we did a quick look around. The first thing you'll notice that is of historical interest, when you come in here is this beautiful, what is that, granite? It looks like granite. Granite plaque says, this building and many books are a gift from friends to the Clark Library Association of Marietta, October A.D. 1893. Then it says, Apply thy heart unto instruction and thine ears to the words of knowledge. Proverbs of Solomon. So um, that is the original plaque put there when they, um, close to when they dedicated this building, I think. Mm -hmm. Don't you think so? I would think, think so. Yeah, yeah it definitely um, looks like it. I don't know that we have the dedication date, but when it was built, it was 1893. 1893. Yeah. So, um, as you look around, this original, this room we're in here would have been the original room. Those openings would not have been there um, because it was just an octagonal building. Okay. They've painted on the ceiling. I'm not sure what the color originally of the ceiling would be. And then under this um, tarp. Um, would be um, eight sky, no, 16 skylights, two on each octagonal um, edge. And um, I'm sure they've covered it to um, keep the light off of the flowers for a variety of reasons. But then if you come over here, I think the floors are probably original. They do have some age to them. If they're not original, they're old anyways. Um, this is the first wing that went on. Uh, that was built on in the 1920s, 1927. 1927. 
Um, there's not a whole lot of uh, architectural detail coming back, but there is some, some water damage as you always expect with older buildings. Um, we certainly have our share of water damage at the Kennesaw House as well. Sometimes it's unavoidable. Yep. And um, let's go around this way. And then this wing was put on in 1945, I believe, right? Does that sound right? Yes. Uh, we're going to go into the exact detail when we get our notes out. But um, so again, imagine these wings full of shelving for books. This was this was a library. This was the city library. Um, now the children's wing was in the basement. Is that right? Did we um, find that out in the beginning? But then yeah. it moved to the section we were just in. Okay, to yeah, the when they section. did. Um, Okay. When they dedicated it to Mabel Cordelou. Okay. They did that. So, but when they built it, they built it with a basement that did, was intended for use to hold books. Yeah. So people would go down in the basement. There's windows in the basement. We're not going to be able to go down today, um, unfortunately, but it's, it is a usable space. It's not we, like a, like a dirty old basement that I'm, that I love crawling through. It is full of so many gorgeous flowers. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's amazing yeah amazing. so um that's their workspace yeah. so we're not going to bother them down there so that's about it for inside um it's a it's a business and you know when it comes to historic preservation sometimes this is the best thing because it's may it's still in use so even though a lot of the details original details are gone we can imagine and um we can appreciate that this building is still being used um so let's go back outside on the ramp. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go down the ramp here. And on this wing, which was put in 1927, you yes, said? Yes, this is the first um, addition that they did on this building. So this is the first one that they, they put in. And you can see that beautiful, now that's marble, that yeah. plaque, uh, to Mabel Cordelou, who we'll talk about a little bit in a little she bit. She was one of the librarians. Yes. Yeah. 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 And um, you've got some beautiful just details. Looking at the details, some beautiful marble um, going all the, a band of marble going all the way around. Uh, obviously, that's the original band is a little bit bigger and wider. And then when they added on, they continued that, but um, with a slightly smaller band. Um, I would imagine that this all came from North Georgia, possibly provided by McNeil Marble. Who knows? Or Georgia Marble Company which were both located and based out of Marietta. So as we go around to the back, you can see that original center um, has uh, an archway kind of detail in the brick along with coins along the side, or, on, or around the top, I should on say. Top and yeah. Too. yeah. And then the different brick as they added on. This back part was added on in the 30s. 38. 38, thank you. Here's a, a sneak peek into the basement. I wonder if that floor is original. I don't if know. Not, maybe it was redone on yeah. like 27 or Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then, and back here, and one of the pictures we're going to show you, I did notice that there was like a barn or some out, big outbuilding that we yes. have yet to identify, but now it's a parking lot. So, and there's Zion um, Baptist Church back there. So, um, We'll come around here and take a look at it's just interesting to see the different annexes and how different they are now this thing sticking out of the ceiling I don't know if that was maybe part of a stove um, that you know or a heat like a, a for heating, a heater yeah. like an interior interior pot-bellied stove that you know maybe it, it, the exhaust went out right there I don't know um, um, Julie to answer your question hopefully soon we'll get back to doing some more in in building stuff for homeschoolers we just right now um we're lucky we can get out for this because we're a little short staff so hopefully soon we'll be able to offer more things for homeschoolers thank you for asking we appreciate it absolutely um but it, oh in the meantime you can go to youtube and you can show all your homeschoolers yeah, they are all, oh. all of our videos <laughs> and actually guys before i forget if you're talking about homeschoolers we do do a program every third saturday so tomorrow we have a pop-in program oh, yeah. sorry i should have mentioned that really yeah. quick uh, but yeah, go to our Facebook page. You'll see it. 
we are on it right now, but we're doing music, and then next month we got spring crafts. So mm -hmm. we do have activities going on. It's just a little bit less person to person. Yeah, yeah. So, um, all you right. Just, you huh? Put it just back. I turned it. Oh this way. yes. All right. We're gonna we're gonna get on. Put it like this. Yeah, there you take this. Here we go. Technical issues. She usually doesn't handle Momentarily, this part, so I'll handle it for her. Momentarily taking a break. We're trying to work smarter, not harder. Yes. So that's why um, we'll have Zion in our background, but you guys. Yeah, safety first. We're getting, <laughs> you know, things that's are happening. Right. So, All right. okay. so we did, Amy did talk about Sarah Freeman Clark when we did St. James Cemetery in October. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, it never hurts to reiterate a wonderful story. Well, so. and I can go into a little more details um, about about Sarah. Here's your folder to yeah, hold just keep a little closer. And so um, yeah, I'll stick a little closer here. So here, I, a lot of my research came from this book. It's uh, I know it's backwards, so I'm gonna. What am I going to do? Hold it. This. Here yeah, we go. There you go. There Here you go. we go. Look at this. Sarah Freeman Clark, 1808 to 1896, a woman of the 19th century by Joan Alice Cop with Scott Grady Bowden. Um, I don't know that this is still in print. You probably could find it on the internet somewhere. Uh, I've seen it on eBay recently. Yeah. So I don't know yeah. what the price it's going for, though. Um, this woman right here. This is what this building is and this library was named after. Um, but her life story, if you are at all interested in early American history, um, especially um, early America as a country, like post, just post-revolution um, of the New England um, group that was budding up there of, you know, intellect and um, artistic just um, geniuses that came out of that time period for American history. Um, and very, uh, so hold on, let's yeah. mention some names. Henry David Thoreau. I'm going to get to that. Oh, sorry. Well, you I'm seem like it. that's where you were no, going. No, I was thinking of, of a word. I, I'm having trouble coming up with words, but I'm going to get to the names. So oh. anyways, it was just a good time period for, uh, and a place. Now in the South, I don't know that it was as progressive. That's the word I was looking for. Oh, progressive. There you go. See, there we go. Um, Except for a minute. Yeah. It wasn't as progressive as probably in the North during this time. But so Sarah Freeman Clark was born in 1808 in Massachusetts. And she was born in the middle of this society that was budding in and around Boston that um, was very progressive and um, had a very intellectual and um, free thinking um, sort of uh, plan to it. So one thing I wanted to read first. Um, it's kind of like an American, almost like a weird American renaissance of art and culture. Yeah, I think so. And, yeah. yeah. So she she was one, she had four brothers. She was the only girl with four bro brothers. And she came from a family, All of them, a lot of the men in her family, not all of them, were um, pastors. And James Freeman Clark, who was her grandfather, um, he was the founder of the Unitarian Church which is, I believe the building's still there. It's King's Row Church, I believe. Mm. It's up in um, Boston area, yeah. somewhere up there. And um, so they were very well known in this circle of what was called transcendentalist. It was also called a New England flowering um, group that they, that they had. Anyways, he was very famous at the time for this progressive thinking. And so this was her grandfather, passed down to her father, Samuel Clark. And, um, and then... Actually, I think he might have been her stepfather. Uh, you, uh, yeah, actually, no, step grandfather. Step grandfather. That's, that's what, what it was. was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, um, but anyways, she was surrounded by all of these free thinkers and and these uh, these guys. So, um, they also had forward thoughts on women and how women should be educated and the roles of women um, who were uh, educated and more intelligent and more apt to doing things outside the home. They weren't necessarily forcing them into marriage and that sort of thing. Um, so Sarah grew up up there and she was very smart. Um, she went to school with her brothers and went to, with a lot of these people that I'm going to name in a minute. Um, and she then she ended me up, back I know, I, wanted to I know, say who it is, who it is. <laughs> and then, and then, so, so she also became an artist and she, she was one of the very first women to proclaim 
that she was a professional artist. Yeah. So that's it, right. it might not sound like a big deal now, it is. but it is. back then women weren't professional anything. I mean, you know, homemakers. Uh, yeah. You know that that just wasn't was. a thing. You didn't proclaim a profession. Well, be, you know, you Well, any woman who did proclaim a profession was usually yeah. a loose woman of or deemed a loose woman or whatever. That's but, the oldest profession. Well, there's mo well even act acting any That's like, true. That's you know, true. Any sort of profession. That's true. Where you were make potentially making your own money. Yes. It was not um, Hold on, now I gotta find this. She put a lot okay. of notes in. I got a lot of notes tabs, but um, one thing though that um, you probably don't know. Okay, okay, lay it on me. All right, so you don't know this name. All right, we'll see. All right, I mean you know the name, but you don't know the connection. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, so one of the cool things was her 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 actual grandfather. Um, was a general in the Revolutionary War. His name was Hull, William Hull, I think, General Hull. Don't look at my like notes. Like Hull, like H-U-L-L, -L, or like yes, because okay, okay, yeah, Hull, oh, H-U-L-L. -L. This okay. was a maternal grandfather, okay, I gotcha. think. Okay, so anyways, he was a kind of a big deal during the Revolution, and so he also had a lot of famous friends. Okay, okay. one of which, okay, can y'all see my shirt? Hold on, oh, show my shirt. Hold on. Show my shirt. Yeah, hold on. Okay. I know who you're gonna say now. No, you don't. Still don't know. Uh, history has its eyes on you. And if you don't know that logo, that's Hamilton, y'all. Hamilton. Okay. So this is uh, one of my favorite plays and, of course, thousands, millions of other people, too. But one of the characters in the play and it's one a musical. of... musical. Whatever. Musical. No, there's a difference. Okay. In the musical, there you go. one of the characters in the musical is the real life Lafayette. Yeah. So General Hall, I know you knew who he was. But you don't know what the story okay, is. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Tell he the story. He was friends with General Hull. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, so one day General Hull brought Lafayette, General Lafayette, over to his house to meet all his grandchildren. Ah, oh, very cool. Which Sarah Freeman Clark was one of them, and she says... Which, that's actually very important. Yes. Because oftentimes the little girls would not be included in yeah. meeting yeah. famous military people. So that is, that's very progressive so, is the word you're using. Yes, and so one of the things that bound them together, Hull and Lafayette, was they had both been wrongly accused of treason. Oh. And so General Hull, actually, long story short, during the war, he was told to attack um, some, uh, it might have been after, it might have been 1812, War of 1812, well, it might have been sometime in there, but anyways, he was told to send in his men into battle, but he was grossly outnumbered. No, oh, it's no. no, it's an ambulance, it's not police. No, There's a police. That's the police. That's the police. Oh, never Don't mind they that. know? We're busy. We got stuff going on. Anyways, General Hull um, was told to send in his men to attack a group of British troops over in Canada. He was in Detroit, I think, somewhere in Michigan. And um, he refused because he was outnumbered and he surrendered instead. So for that, not only did he get charged with treason, but he had the li a life sentence put on him, like a death sentence, death penalty. They were going to kill him, but they ended up dropping it. Anyways, so that's how he and Lafayette became friends, because Lafayette felt sorry. So, it says in the book, long after the War of 1812, oh, that's what it was. Yeah, it was. In the summer of 1824, General Hull planned an exceptional surprise for his grandchildren, introducing them to Revolutionary War hero General Lafayette. They had known each other during the Revolution, and both had been accused wrongly of treason. The Clark children remembered especially the arrival of the general, who placed both hands on Hull's shoulders and kissed him on both cheeks in the French fashion, then said to his old friend, You and I have suffered much from contumely and reproach. I don't know what that word means. Contumely. That's a new um, one. I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. But our characters are vindicated. Let us now forgive our enemies and die at peace with all the world. So there's Lafayette. He's he's one of my favorites. So, anyways, back to Sarah. Back to Sarah. Okay. So something's I've, going on on the square. Whew, so you can't hear that. There's a lot. Um. So how does Sarah? What what gets oh. Sarah? You know, in adulthood, she's an okay. artist. She, she is an artist. artist. Yes. What well, gets her? okay. Her friends. First off, let me name her friends. About time. All right. So, so um. It's, Time to name drop. Many mid-century liberal spirits rooted their ferment in Unitarian doctrines, which reinforced their beliefs. The center of 
Unitarianism was in eastern Massachusetts among enlightened upper-class merchants, lawyers, and ministers who wholeheartedly imbibed the ministerial teachings of intellectuals such as William Henry Channing, Henry Hedge, George Ripley, Theodore Parker, Ralph Walter Emerson, and James Freeman Clark. While each Unitarian leader differed on doctrine, all were united in most instances in efforts to shed the Calvinistic creeds of their forebears. Most of these ministers were loosely bound together by the intellectual spirit of transcendentalism, a movement which drew heavily upon romantic ideals. At its root, transcendentalism professed the basic idea of goodness in the natural world and the value of individualism. So that's the big key there is individualism. So that's where she's coming from. Those are some of her friends, but not all of them. It wasn't um, the friend I named. I know. Here's more. Just saying. So, okay, so she becomes an adult. She um, becomes an artist. Some of her friends, of course, you, who'd you say? Henry David Thoreau. Oh, Henry David Thoreau. She's actually closer to Ralph Waldo Emerson, Emerson Oliver Wendell Holmes, Elizabeth Peabody, um, Margaret Fuller, who was um, a, a strong feminist um, during this time. And she became very close friends with Margaret Fuller and actually traveled with Margaret while Margaret did um, wrote about her travels. And, and Sarah went along with her and made sketches for the book that she published. Um, and she, she traveled on, a lot. If you want to take your mask off, there is no one else around us. I will have my mask on. I don't know. I don't There's want to no trouble. one around us. That's I'll fine. I'm in trouble. Um, so anyway, so she, um, she travels around, all around with, with Margaret Fuller. And she really just lives her life as an artist. Um, she shows her artwork in the Boston Athenaeum, which was a, a big deal, kind of like the High Museum of Art of our, you know, of, of our area. Um, a big deal. She was one of the first uh, women to do so. And actually, she was also, before she, um, well, no, when she first had some works in there, she went to go see them um, without an escort. <gasps> and so it was scandal. it was scandal because she went to go look at her own artwork on display without a male escort by herself. So wow. anyway, I know, I know. So um, she, she was pretty individualized. Now, she never ended up getting married, and she never had children, um, but she ended up, she was a caretaker for her mother because when you have four older brothers, it falls on the daughter. Yeah, and, I mean, it always does. It's the daughter. So she ends, ends up as a caretaker for her mother until her mother dies, and then she moves to Rome because she was um, a... Italy, not Georgia. Yeah, yeah, Italy. She was an expert on Dante, and she was fascinated with him, and so she ends up moving to Rome for 12 years, and she follows in the footsteps of Dante and documents that in a journal and... Um, and does and writes articles that she sends back to American magazines about it, um, and becomes somewhat well known in the literary circles mm -hmm. for that. Um, so, anyways, and she, I believe, she had a niece with her at the time. So then, her brothers, who at that time they were living their lives with their families, two of them had been in Chicago, but when the Great Chicago Fire came through, their houses burned and everything with it, mm -hmm. and so then at that point they moved down here to Marietta. Didn't, they, didn't one of them have, like, health issues? Too? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, it, Marietta yeah. was a health, healthy climate to be Right, in. right. It was, a, it was a health resort, mm -hmm. as it still is. I mean, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so they moved down here to Marietta. So she comes back from Rome. She's missing her family. And she, she decides, and this is, she's in her 70s at this point, Yeah, I that's believe. later on. It's later in life. She decides to stay here um, in Marietta with her brothers. And they all had a house, or two houses, um, on Whitlock. And her house is still there. Actually, I think there's a picture of it in here. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Did you not mark that page? Not that one. Should've. I mean, you know. Um, I better be later than this picture. Yeah. Well, so the house on Whitlock. one of her paintings. It's not in color, but you can see how. She did a lot of landscapes. The house in on Whitlock proves where did their money come from? Um, where did their money come from? The the brothers. Well, one of them was a, a famous minister. He continued on in his father's footsteps up in Massachusetts with the church. Um, and I don't know what kind of salaries they get. I don't know that they had a ton of money, to be honest. Actually, at one point after her stepfather dies, she and her mother open a boarding house in Boston. Mm. And so they, and in the boarding house, that's where the Peabody sisters, there are three sisters, um, and the Peabody sisters end up living in the boarding house with her mother uh, and her. And so she gets close to them. Elizabeth Peabody is, of course, a um, advocate of education for children, actually not 
dissimilar to Alice McClaw and Bernie mm-hmm. that we just talked about last week because Pe- Elizabeth Peabody advocated for kindergarten, um, as did Alice. But Sophia Peabody, one of the three sisters, actually goes on to marry Nathaniel Hawthorne. Oh. And he was a recluse, but, you know, an author. And um, so Not my favorite book, I'm just saying. The Scarlet Letter. Yeah. Not my favorite. He was a... It sounds like he was kind of a weird dude, so, you know, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to right. be but so so she gets in close with Nathaniel Hawthorne um, because he really didn't like women apparently, but he liked Sophia. And since Sophia was friends with Sarah, Sarah did meet him a number of times and go to his house um, with his reclusive family. His mother was a recluse. Anyways, Side note on that I one. diverge. Yeah. What was the question? Where, Where they, get, they the get, get the money? I don't think they had a whole lot of money. Is my answer. Um, I think that when her mother dies. Um, she may have had some money of her own from mm-hmm. selling her art, uh, but whatever it was, you know, maybe it was family money, maybe, well, the, I don't like know. The artwork that she did for Margaret Fuller's book, she probably got paid for that, yeah. that art. Yeah. So, that, so she, yeah. Yeah. And then again, when you don't have any children who suck the money from you, <laughs> you yes. can spend it on yourself. That's right. That's right. So, got to have someone to wait on them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know, Hawthorne. Who yeah. knows? Maybe he just likes Sophia. She was kind of sickly, too, and a recluse. So, I think they, they understood each other. Birds um, are Yeah. So, um, so, Sarah comes down here. She, she comes to Marietta. Yes. Okay. And she realizes when she gets here that... Um, that you know, they're, they're, the community is sorely lacking in probably its progressivism and its education, yes. because in its education, especially of young girls, but of, of in general, probably compared to what she was raised in, the community of individual individualism and high, you know, um, Im, importance of education for all children. Coming down here, you've got more of an imp, imp, importance of you know work and um supporting your family and and um, that kind of thing so anyway so she realizes there's no library and she or she is raised by some of the greatest authors of our time Mm -hmm. and friends with them and this community she's moved into doesn't even have a library so about the same time she starts a lending library out of the shed in the back of her house yes yeah and calls it the Franklin on Whit- on Whitlock. On Whitlock. Mm-hmm. Calls it the Franklin Lending Library. Oh yeah, I was looking for a picture of the house. And about that time, the Marietta Library Association. So there were some people in town who also agreed with her. About that time, they formed the Marietta Library Association. Yes, and um, but the Library so, Association really had more of its roots in male social. Club versus yes. like everybody. Yes, so. it was definitely all male. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, here's actually, it's not a picture of the house, but it's a sketch. Um, the Knox, I don't know who, I don't know if she did it. Oh, no, yeah. she's not the artist. There's, no. a, there's a signature there, but it's not hers. But this will give you an idea of what the house looks like if you're driving down Whitlock. Um, it still has those skinny um uh, column. Well, I don't know if you call them Post? columns. Post. Yeah, posts right there. So that's the house she lived in. But um, anyway, so she forms this library, and she um, quickly outgrows it. Mm-hmm. Um, she realizes so many people want to borrow books that she doesn't have enough. So she ends up um, advocating for a real library. Yeah. And... To do that, she knew she would need, A, money for more books, and B, a building, and money for a building. So she wrote to her famous friends, which here's some more names somewhere. Okay. Sarah's, so she went back up to visit her friends um, at in some Boston, point. In Boston, yeah. Yeah, because her brother dies. Her brother dies, she goes up to the funeral, and this is in 1888. <clears throat> So Sarah's friends in Boston inquired of her new life in Georgia and listened as she spoke of her small library, which she hoped could unite with a similar independent library group in Marietta, began by the Marietta Library Association. Plans to assist Sarah began at Mary Hemingway's home, not Hemingway's, Hemingway's, on Mount Vernon Street, culminating on May 1st, 1890, with a fundraising event with a Zuni Indian theme. In honor of the Arizona natives who traveled through Boston years earlier on a trek to the Atlantic Ocean. Hmm. Sounds like a fun theme. I don't know what that has to do with Marietta but, or a library, but whatever. Hey, if it, hey, people like theme parties Themes. better, and they raise more yes. money. 
Sarah was confident that her northern friends had not outgrown the habit of giving to good objects, conveying that $2,200 would be needed to build a proper library facility for the town. Books and financial pledges coordinated by Sarah's nephew in Boston, Elliot Clark, arrived in a steady flow to Marietta. Um, Edna Dow Little Hale Cheney sent a, yeah, sent a copy of her Life of Rauch, I don't know, while Dr. Holmes generously presented his old friend with a coveted set of his works, which um, they still have at the library. Yes. I don't know if they have the whole set, but they definitely have his. They're personally signed by him with his personal book plates in them. In older years, Holmes had grown more selective in his support of charitable causes and reserved special gifts, such as his famous The Chambered Nautilus book plate for his lifelong friends, which we have the Chambered Nautilus book plates on our books. So Yes. Or they do. The, the library, library does. Yes. The library system does. Uh, Sarah eventually received all 12 volumes from Holmes. Um, as donations continue to flow in, Sarah began the next phase of her library project, a merger with the Library Association. So, um, so the Library Association, real quick, before, yeah. is, a, is, is in essence a membership group. Mm -hmm. You do have to pay dues. So it is not a Library Association free for all to come and rent or come and get a book. And it was housed in my, uh, the Myers School Room, which Amy and I have not been able to figure no. out where that was. Um, but the idea of these two entities with the same goal coming together, and she pretty much says two things to the library association. One, a building. Yes. One, well, one that they can guarantee that it would be... Um, like in perpetuity. In perpetuity, it, yeah. that it would always be open. And then yeah. two, that they would raise money for land. Oh, now land. She, okay. she raised the money for the building and the books, and she needed a, somewhere to build it, though. So that's when they came in, and they got this property... From? From William Root. And so I'm going to get on the other side so we can show okay. these maps a little bit so right. people get a better idea. Okay. Okay. So tell me where I need to be because this is the corner that Come we're Come over on. this way a little bit. Okay, yeah. Okay. There we are. This is the corner. This is 1890. Uh-huh. So William Root's house is here. Yes. Okay. In 1890. In 1890. Yes. Ooh, Does it show what that building is behind it that we have in that picture? No. It just says dwelling. Okay. Okay, let me know. 1895. All right. The library. There it is. And then this is, these are dwelling. It says That's dwellings. Root's house, I think. They moved it Did behind they move it. Back? Yeah. Okay. So I believe William Root just moves his house back and then they put the library there. And then. Hey, Vicki. It pretty much stays the same even going up to 1905, but I'm um, going to come back around. So. It's, it's that, that corner plot that we are on now. Um, and so, again, if you if you don't know where we're at, it's literally Polk Street and Church Street is where mm -hmm. we're at. But, oh, Lemon. Well, it's Lemon Polk, depending oh, oh. on what side yeah, 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 you're yeah, on sorry. on Church Street. Yeah, you're so, right. Yeah, it's both. Yeah. I know it's confusing <laughs> that way. Um, but, yeah, so this is where the building is built. And she make, she she raises, what, $2,000? In Boston? 2200 2200 And I think here, uh, the Library Association raises like 1200 for the land. Well, what I, I, I didn't quote, I didn't figure out that one, but her 2200 today is about fifty seven, fifty eight thousand dollars $58,000. So that's a pretty yeah, penny. Yeah, that is. I mean, granted, you wouldn't be able to build a beautiful brick building for that amount, but you could buy a lot of books yeah. for that. So they, the building is built and dedicated, as we said, with that plaque mm -hmm. in 1893. Mm-hmm. And it's the uh, octagonal shape. And the reason they picked an octagonal, mm -hmm. octagonal shape mm -hmm. is because a phrenologist. Yes. Do you know what a phrenologist is? No. <laughs> I believe. The study of friends. No. <laughs> I believe a phrenologist is the person who. Oh, the brain thing. The brain, like. Does your read, read scalp the and, of your scalp yeah. and tells you your personality and yeah, stuff. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, interesting. Okay. So the idea with the uh, with having an octagonal shape is you get more floor space yes. than a rectangular building. Right. So you get more floor space. You get more bookshelves in essence. So that's mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. So the original section of the building, which is what we were looking at earlier. The bricks were left open, creating open coins. And if you know 
um, any architecture, it's spelled Q U I O, not like money coins. Mm -hmm. And we can show those again in just a second. You want to flip I'll that show around while, while you're talking? Talk. Yep. Same so they wavelength. are. So on each wall of the octagon, not covered up by a wing addition, is a blank recessed segment segmental arch. The roof is capped with an octagon shaped glass and cream painted metal skylight cupola with. 32 lights. Oh, 32. Four on each side. I'm going to walk back see if we can see it. 32 lights, four on each side. You. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so but there's see, 32 like two, up there? It, I think maybe those two, have been changed four, six, now. Eight, yeah, I don't know. I think they were, yeah. Originally, they would have had more like more window panes up there, I guess. Why don't we stay right here for that now so okay. we're a little bit farther back. Okay. Discussing. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. So, can I um, bend it back? Uh, you got to be careful. No, I can't. I'll just do this. Just, or scoot back. There. Just scoot back in the parking lot. It's okay. I'm good. Um, the stone belt, of course, and we saw that, that stone belt, and it's rough for a reason because it's an architectural feature. Um, the open coin segmental arch coupler are all elements of the Italianate style of architecture. So, mm -hmm. that's what style it is. Italiante. So the, when we were way back in the beginning, um, the wing dedicated to Mabel Cordelou was 1927. Um, the wing that, and that was like the children's wing. Yeah. The next wing was built in 1938, and the last wing was built in 1945. So it's almost like a 10 year, 10 year kind of thing. The, it stays a library till 1963. Uh-huh. So it, raise your hand if you went to the library here. Yeah, did you go to the Clark Library? <laughs> um, the library then moves to what was the old post office, now the art museum. Yes. The build, This building, Clark Library, um, during the 60s, the basement was actually used as a polling place, which I did not yeah, know. I thought that cool. was pretty cool. Um, then the building in the 70s is used as the Fine Arts Club. So it's interesting to think about it this way, Amy. Every time there's been a library, it's followed by art. Oh. Think about it. So it's this a good building community center though. So library to art. And yeah. then the post office went post office library to art. Yeah. So we've got a yeah. couple buildings with that history. Yeah. And then after it was a fine arts club, it became the home of Cobb Landmarks for a little while. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Yep. And then um, it turned to private business and it's been Mike Woodall's. I wonder Woodall's. if their offices were here when they moved the root house from this lot to where it is located now on Polk and the um, I don't know. And I don't think I saw Trevor hop yeah. on. But I um, wonder about that. I wonder about that. So, yeah. The building, though, is now, while Mike Whittle's uh, floor shop is in here, it's actually a city-owned building. So, the city of Marietta oh, owns it. Yeah. the city. We determined the city took it over in 1945, I think. Yeah, we have two. Yeah, we yeah. have two dates. We don't know what's accurate. This one says that um, Adrian Cordelou, Mrs. Mark Temple, which is um, Sarah Gober Temple of the first hundred years, and very cool, Doug. I like that. And oh, yay! In the fifties, and Guy Northcutt signed a renewal of the charter in 1945, and the deed was transferred to the city of Marietta at that time to take over. So um, the interesting thing is, and then I think later in the fifties they. Built Fort Hill Library for African Americans because it was segregated, um, and then Marietta Place had a library too. And Marietta Place had one too, which yeah. was farther, you know, farther away for those the community um, of families who lived down by uh, Dobbins and um, Lockheed. Yeah. So, but at that time, I don't know when the when the uh, Cobb County. Okay, so. The library, public library system opened the new library on Roswell Street in eight, 1989, but I don't know when the library system took it over instead of, you know, the libraries. Um, did they always run oh, it and it was a city no. building? No, you know? I think it was a private building. It was a private building, but the library system ran it. Well, I don't think there was a system until later. But was it, were they city employees? No. Because remember the librarians, you know, at one point, they were volunteers. Yes. But then they were, they started getting paid uh one of them was but the city but there is we don't have a city library system we have a county library system so yeah. smyrna is oh. the only one that's got its own city library doug i bet in in the 50s florence sibley miss sibley was her, your librarian i bet because she started a, her 23 year career with the library in 1936 
Um, a couple other things, though. There's some library notations. I'm not sure where this author got this, but some that I thought were funny. In 1920, Officer Goodson of the Marietta Police Department made several trips to homes of those having books too long. I read that. I was like, what police officer does that? He'd be knocking on my door every day. <laughs> my kids. I can't find those books. Um, and then also, another interesting thing was Virginia Vanstone Crosby, who we also mentioned last week in regards to honoring Alice Bernie. Bernie. Um, she was also a librarian here. Yes. For a little while. Because she lived and, like down, down Cherokee yeah. Street, not very far. And in 1926, um, well, she sent a letter to Franklin Delano Roosevelt requesting the president's autograph in his 1926 book, Witherbound. So I need to go to the George room and see if they have that book. Oh, That'd be interesting. Because yeah. I've never seen that one. If they have it, I didn't look inside to know that he signed it. Um, so let's see. Anything else? Well, it was very important at, when they opened the library that the books were pure and healthy reading well they still have restrictions they do but it was, it was very specific yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i would say the school libraries have more restrictions sure. now than but another thing i thought was funny was in 1922 a traveling man asked four different people four i mean the audacity four different people for directions to clark library signs were erected to assist strangers to the building it took four people to get four signs. people. Thank Takes you, more Greg. than four people today to um, get to, get, to uh, get, a, get a sign but it, up but in the city. Let's reiterate this, though. For a while, you had to be a member of the library, and you did actually pay, unlike today, mm -hmm. where you get your car for free. So if you didn't go to the library, you wouldn't know where the library yeah. is. Yeah. So thank you, Greg. Yes, thank you. Now, Greg sent 500 stars. He must want that book. Somebody else... Did somebody Did earlier, else? I because I, I couldn't uh, see it. I don't know. Our little our little thing isn't moving, but I I know. All right, it's we're happening. gonna evaluate at the end of the video then to see. All right, hold on. Oh, um, top star senders. Oh, Anne, you sent us more. Thank you, Terry and Terry Grit. Said all right. So right now, Terry and Anne are in uh, a contest for the most stars to get that book. So we'll they see. They gave last yes. week too. And, but yeah, yeah, we're getting... and now you can actually give stars after we go live when we. It's still... Yeah, it still sits there. So, it's like 24 hours, I think. Yes, yeah, so let's leave it to the end of the weekend, all right? Yes. On Sunday, we will determine... No, Monday. Monday. Monday, because who wants to count on Sunday? We'll Not be at home. So on Sunday, we'll see who gave the most stars to win the copy of the book. You have it? Oh, yes, I do. Sorry. History in Focus, which is a... Um, open it up a little bit. Show them what it... Okay, Vanna. Come on. No, you're Vanna. I'm not Vanna. You're I'm blonde. Not. I'm not. Hold on a second. I'm going to turn it towards her so everybody can see. Take a look at this lovely book. It was published by the MDJ a couple years ago, but they, they used a lot of the pictures from our archives. Yeah, if you guys didn't hear that, it's MDJ because the microphones are on a yeah. different angle. But yeah, it's a full, awesome book. Um, a lot of the photos are from us. So, oh, yeah. And it pretty much goes from the earliest photography in Marietta to today. All right. Yeah. Hold on. Let's go back. All right. So two things before we wrap up. So last week in our video, we mentioned our new exhibit, um, Marietta 1899, color captured in black and white. Mm -hmm. And it will feature in one spot, this. That's one of the photographs. This is the Clark Library 1899. Yep. yep. So you guys are getting a treat. This is the first time we've shown this one in public, I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, so yeah. yeah, we got that. And then next week, it is a, we're premiering a video. Yeah. Um, I will be available to answer any questions. Stars will be enabled, but it is a pre-recorded video. Um, and we will be talking about the woman who we have mentioned numerous times today. And in pretty much any video that we do research, she's where we go to first. Mm -hmm. Is, uh, do you remember the full name? Sarah Tim. Blackwell, Black Black Sarah Blackwell <laughs> Gober Temple, Sarah Blackwell Gober Temple. You caught me off guard. I know that, but I just you can't catch me off guard. I'm like, huh? We just got to keep saying it because her name is gonna show up, and um, that video will um, we will talk about a new um, what's the word I'm looking for? Adventure. A adventure that Amy and yes. I are doing. Um, so yeah, you'll hear about that more next week. So yes. make sure you like, follow. Follow us on Instagram as well. Uh, send us stars. Tell other people to send us stars. 
Again, the first person who gets the most stars by the end of the weekend gets a copy of History and Focus. And, um, yeah, turn it the right way, thanks. And then also, it's really chilly, so we're going to yeah. go back inside. Thank you guys for Thank watching. Thank you. Appreciate it. See Have you a great next weekend. week.